My name's Andy Hirons, and I'm a senior lecturer in arboriculture and urban forestry at University Centre Myersco. And that really involves two main aspects. So firstly, research. I research primarily around tree selection for urban environments at the moment, but I've got a, a broader interest in, in stress physiology, particularly drought in trees. And the other aspect of my work is to, to teach, and, and that's to both full-time students that come to the, the centre in Preston, but also to online students all over the world that study on our undergraduate and postgraduate programs. I'm fascinated by trees, full stop, but uh, I'm particularly fascinated by the way trees integrate in their environment, how they survive in their environment, and, and how uh, adaptations uh, have evolved over time to enable trees to perform better in, in different types of environment. And uh, you know, I think that really is, is a fascinating area of science, but it's also got a, a route into practical arboriculture. And that's where my selection interest has, has been developed. And, and really, that helps me integrate some of the fundamental science, if you like, with, with practice. And that's something I'm, I'm passionate about. And uh, throughout my teaching, but also my research, I like to I like to sort of integrate the science with the practice. I've been described as a, as a pracademic. And I think that's, uh, in some senses, that sort of encapsulates uh, lots of what I'm about. I, I enjoy science, but it has to be relevant to the real world. And I think that's something that uh, I try and work on. And the exchange of that knowledge between the scientific community and the practitioners is something I'm really passionate about because um, science can drive practice forward, but only if we make it accessible to the people that are actually uh, you know, managing trees on the ground. This year, in January 2018, I released a book uh, co-authored with Dr. Peter Thomas from Keele University called Applied Tree Biology. And it really tries to take some of the fundamental biology of trees. So we look at uh, growth of trees, the, the anatomy of trees, uh, aspects about the leaves and crowns of trees, uh, water relations, carbon relations, some... Uh, ideas around stress physiology and the environmental tolerance of trees. And it integrates and, and pulls together quite a disparate literature on trees and, and their biology into one book that I hope is accessible for people that, that haven't got plant physiology backgrounds but have a, a, an interest in the way trees work and, and tries to make that biological content accessible and relate it to a field of practice, uh, and that's the care and management of trees, particularly in amenity landscapes. Soil is a, a matrix of, of uh, rock, particles, minerals, nutrients, organic matter, uh, that is the substrate for, of growth for, for trees. And it's, it's, a, it's a living thing, and it, it encapsulates much of our terrestrial world. And of course, trees and, and plants rely on it uh, for support, for nutrition, for, for water, um, for all sorts of other ecological functions. And it's fundamental to tree performance and uh, the ability of trees to be able to survive on any site. Uh, uh, soil is yeah, in integral to the health of trees and, and equally the health of soils in terms of their biological diversity, as well as their sort of structure, if you like, is, is fundamental to, to get right if you want trees to perform well in, in any landscape. Uh, today I was speaking at the Boracultural Association conference on the work I've been carrying out over the last two years uh, around the selection of trees for urban environments. And that was uh, a project that was derived from funding principally from the NERC, the National Environment Research Council, and I worked collaboratively, as well as with my academic institutions, the Trees and Design Action Group, who are an organisation which uh, helped to disseminate information to a broad range of practitioners involved with uh, urban forest and green infrastructure. And so that project really uh, culminated in the production of some guidance around the selection of trees for urban environments. And, and I particularly wanted to focus on the translating, translation of science into guidance and, and I've uh, got an interest in the use of plant traits, so specific measurable characteristics of plants and trees that, that can help inform the selection of trees for our amenity landscapes. Guidance that's available uh, from the TDAG website 
uh, www.tdag.org.uk. So one of the best things we can do to ensure planting is done correctly is actually engage with the arboricultural professionals and actually get them in decision-making positions within any landscaping phase. And some of the, the kind of routine, kind of fundamental errors that are made uh, in the planting process are not done by arboriculturists, but, but done by other well-meaning professionals that don't necessarily have the, the knowledge of tree care, the tree biology and physiology uh, that actually supports good outcomes. And so we see tree pits that are routinely designed uh, with insufficient soil volume. Uh, we see planting occurring on, on in soils that are highly compacted uh, and, and suffer from waterlogging frequently. We see you know, poor species selection going on and a whole range of other problems that actually can be solved uh, with some pretty straightforward arboricultural input. And, and that's the frustration, I think, as an arboriculturalist looking at landscape initiatives and, 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 and schemes around the country, is that often you think, if only, if only. And um, I think we have to be better as a profession at engaging at an earlier stage in the planning process and making sure our voice is heard. And, and, and doing some diplomatic work with other key actors in, in the landscape profession so that they recognise our voice is distinctive and, and the, our experience and expertise is distinctive. And I think that would really be um, transformative in the way trees and, and landscape designs in general uh, actually come to some form of fruition and contribute in the longer term. Uh, because for sure, none of the benefits that are associated tr with trees uh, will occur if you, if you have to keep replacing trees on a three or a five year cycle. And what we want is to be um, establishing sustainable, large-scale trees wherever possible uh, that can actually contribute to future generations and give that sort of historic legacy, if you like, of a planting scheme and not just relying on, on something that is, is there today and gone tomorrow because of you know, fundamental problems in you know, root, rooting environment design, soil volume you know, or, or, or selection of, of species. Planting trees is, is a relatively straightforward in, in the sense that it's, it's not uh, highly complex, but it does involve a number of different components. The first, I, I would say, is, is getting the right species. And uh, you know, there's, there's a whole range of information that can be relevant for that. But for sure, identifying which species can perform well in that landscape is critical. Uh, the, the, the second is, is to get really good quality plants, and that means engaging with the, the nursery sector, but also holding them to account um, for the delivery of quality plants and making sure that we understand what quality plants are and we, help, we specify uh, characteristics that, that mean that we, we, we don't get you know, poor quality plants to the site. Uh, a third element is, is really focusing on the rooting environment, and that's the uh, can, can uh, involve understanding the, the soil volume, the, the, the design of the rooting environment, and making sure some real fundamental things like soil aeration, um, you know, the supply of water are, are there and available for the tree. And then the final element, if you like, is the actual planting practice itself. And, uh, and just simple things like making sure that the, the tree is at the correct depth, that it has got a host soil volume that is it a, a low bulk density that's capable of being rooted into, uh, that uh, mulch is provided around that, uh, that new rooting area so that the, that the biological properties of the soil are augmented and um, improved. And making sure that yeah, the, the aftercare in terms of staking and irrigation are in place. And, and for me, if, if, you, if you remove any one of those elements, the selection, the quality of the plant, the rooting environment, or the um, good quality practice, uh, you're, you're likely to have a downfall in terms of establishment. And so planting does involve getting a spade and digging, but it also involves a whole range of other criteria that are critical to ensuring the long-term success. <laughs>